Madagascar. For centuries, the bloodiest cockpit of all the seas, where the infamous Brotherhood of the Damned waited to plunder the treasure-laden galleons from India and Cathay, then returned drunk with slaughter to their pirate stronghold of last hope. Most ruthless of all was Captain William Kidd. He encountered the great London galleon, the Twelve Apostles, commanded by Admiral Lord Blaine, and approaching unsuspected in the guise of a peaceful merchant, by a sudden treacherous salvo, he reduced her to a burning hulk. When night fell, the Twelve Apostles was only a blazing funeral pyre on the placid surface of a Madagascar lagoon. Stop me. There's a pretty sight. It'll be prettier still when the fire reaches the magazine, Captain. Pretty, though. Lots of stout seamen among them. They've been with us a long time. We can none of us live forever, Mr. Boyle. And dead men don't talk. Man your own. We got this job to do before high tide. <laughs> If the tide catches us there, it'll save the king's hangman some rope. There you are. Deep enough to bury a man in. Give us a hand, man. Already, Captain. Down she goes. What are you waiting for? Well, Captain, that chest's been in your cabin a longish time. And we all thought as how it wouldn't do no harm to open up that chest and make sure that what was in it then is in it now. I suppose you remember what was in it? I, I remember an emerald necklace that came off that Portuguese ship, El Vengar. And all those pearls that we took from the big ship, the Virgin Queen. I remember a diamond medallion we got from that Moorish guy in North Madagascar. And could we ever forget that silver casket with the arms of Lord Blaine that you claimed for yourself after the taking of the Twelve Apostles, sir? Your neck will be stretched as long as your memory one of these days. Satisfied? Gallows? Meat? Put them back. Load away. There's something else you've forgotten. What do you want now? We've got but half an hour before the tide traps us. That's as may be, sir. We're all equal in this, I take it. Equal shares, yes. Well, that key then, what you put back in your belt. That goes down with the chest. Thus we start so all clear and no favors. And if some of us don't get back, it'll be that much easier open for them as does. Question me on it again, would you? I'll rip you from belly to chime. <laughs> such callous rascals that we'd leave a dead comrade without commending his soul to his new master.
Here lieth one who through treachery and avarice would have placed in jeopardy the lives of honest men. And here may he lie forever in the sands of Madagascar. Rest in peace. It's time to be out, my lad. It's time to be away. gentleman's a gentleman, he's a gentleman. That's all there is to it, sir. I'm one of nature's gentlemen, but I need polish, my good man. If I'm to improve myself... A gentleman employs the terminology, my good man, only when addressing lower servants. Or his inferior, sir. You see, that's why I need you. My upbringing... The gentleman never sucks his teeth, sir. Many a man's social career has been ruined by lesser. You seem to know your business. I want the best mine and I can pay for it. Hundred quid a year. An infallible mark of a person of quality is his reluctance to pay his domestics high wages. You don't say so. Merely an idiosyncrasy of good breeding, sir. Uh, Sixty quid a year, then? You realize I've never been on board a ship before, sir. Oh, don't let that frighten you. To the contrary. In fact, since I was a nipper, I've had rather an adventurous inclination toward life on the bound in Maine. It should be quite educational, sir. You'll learn a lot, no doubt. <laughs> Is it a bargain, then? Very well, sir. My hand on it. Oh. your proposal, my Lord Bellamont, that Captain Kidd sail to meet our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, and give him safe convoy through the pirate waters of Madagascar. May it please your majesty, yes. That needs a bold and adventurous man. Bring in this Captain Kidd while we take the measure of him. Captain William Kidd. Your Royal Majesty, the noble lord. Belmont, is this your roaring killer of Spanish buccaneers? <laughs> me, me lad, I am only a peaceful shipmaster who must do trade with other ships without inquiring too closely about their business. And it was so I fell into the hands of the Twelve Apostles, a king's ship turned pirate. In Madagascar waters? I have never been in Madagascar waters, Your Grace. It was off the southern tip of Africa where I had gone to trade in elephant's teeth. Who commanded her? One of your admirals, Your Majesty. Name of Lord Blaine. He did turn pirate then. Sufficiently, my lad, to put fear in honest traders like myself. And if you are successful in this voyage, Captain, what reward do you expect? May it please your majesty, having forfeited me honor in that I was forced to strike me colors to a pilot. I want no reward but to regain it in the service of your majesty. Unless it be, or is it true that Lord Blaine's lands are estreated and his title forfeit? Yes. All, well, all I ask is that if I lay this renegade nobleman by the heels, is that you honor the humble self with his castle and his lands. 
Is that all you want, Captain Kidd? Not a pardon more, Your Majesty. Hmm. The fellow treats of a title so lightly, he must be bursting with noble blood. Though I confess he keeps it well hid. Aye, sir, you can no more judge of a man by his appearance than you can judge the extent of a nobleman's brains by the expensiveness of his wig. <laughs> <laughs> Am I to suppose that the captain of the King's Guard would deign to fence with me? Come, Captain. Is your courage less than your wit? Nay, no, sir, I know nothing of the fence. You must come at me quickly as though you'd kill me. Very well, then. I ask pardon, sir. I have a hot head when roused. I only meant to demonstrate. And a good purpose, Captain. Your Majesty is satisfied with the captain of our choosing? I can think of none better. I thank you, sir. And now, Captain, the main mission of your cruise will be to meet a great ship, the Quida Merchant, which is sailing from India with vast treasures, and to give her safe conduct, in my name, past the pirate waters of Madagascar. But, Your Majesty, Will her commander accept me letter of mark as sufficient authority to... You shall have a letter to our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, who is returning in her. But he is to accept your protection. And to submit to all matters pertaining to the safety of the ship. And her treasure, sire. Oh, yeah. And now, sire, me crew. Your crew? Captain Kidd wishes to recruit a crew from the pirates, and now under capital sentence in Newgate and the Marshalsea. A crew of condemned pirates? Aye, sir. There's none would be so loyal, nor fight so desperate as cutthroats under sentence of death, if they knew that at the end of the voyage, a royal pardon would be in their pockets. But I shall hold you accountable for their good conduct. Between their conduct and mine, Your Majesty, there will be little to choose. And now, goodbye. And God speed you. I am but his unworthy sparrow. eat the bill scum from an African slaver. Adam, don't let that temper get you the lash again. If I must hang, I'll hang. But I'll go to the gallows with clean guts at least. Hey, you! What kind of stinking maggot's meat is this? Waters! Waters! There's that dainty crumb mercy complaining about the taste of the king's bounty again. Watch it. Bounty? Bounty me eye! The king's allowance is threepence a day for food, not muck from the sewers of Whitechapel. Making trouble again, eh, Mercy? I'm asking only what a man's legally entitled to. Here, smell this. Delicious. Here, your governor. What sort of a kingdom is this? Where a man's condemned before he's heard and starved before they hang him. Who's that quarrelsome fella? Out of mercy. He was taken in a pirate ship by His Majesty's frigate, Wasp. He's always escaping, so that's why we keep him in chains. He's got a lacing of tiger's blood in him. Pooh. This ain't exactly a flower garden, is it? Oh, forgive me, Governor. These are two of my officers. Uh, Mr. Boyle, Governor Landers. Mr. Lorenzo, Governor Landers. Spanish blood. A pretty lot of sinners. Capitan. Do you think there is anyone down there knows us? I hope not. Governor, would you be good enough to tell them what we're here for? Give heed, you, you vermin. 
Here's news to your advantage. Is the hangman dead then? Out with it then, Jack Nasty Face. Is it that your mother's turned into an honest woman? Silence, you mutinous dogs. If another man speaks, I'll trice him up by the thumbs and play him raw. Governor, is that the way to win the love of these unfortunate gentlemen? Now then, me bullies, would you rather do the gallows dance and hang in chains till the crows pick your eyes from your rotting skulls? Or would you feel the roll of a stout ship beneath your feet again? I have a vessel, the Adventure Galley, and the King's Commission to Sailor. And for those who show a loyal and a stout heart, there's a royal pardon in the offing. Which of you knows the waters of Madagascar? I do. Would you have him unlocked, Governor? Order. Unlock him. Look you then. I want men with iron in their blood and steel in their sinews. And the first up here is the first enlisted. Governor, if your waters are ready, would you be good enough to have them lower the ropes? Lower away! Regardless of the fact that I'm your captain, you will always address a gentleman as sir, scum. Aye, sir. Make your mark. On board. Name? Adam Mercy, sir. Oh, so it's you. Mercy, that's a comical handle for a blade of fortune. Mercy. It's also something the world needs more of. Fire and death of philosopher, you speak culture. Were you by any chance stable boy to a noble house? Perhaps. I was also master gunner to a buccaneer you may have heard of, Captain Avery. Avery's master gunner. We need of a master gunner, Mr. Boyle, and from what I've heard, uh, Avery was a shrewd hand at picking him. The berth's yours for as long as you can handle it. I can handle it. Swivel gun along, Tom. I'll forfeit a guinea for every miss. You'll forfeit your neck if you miss while you're on my ship. Make your mark. And you can write. We'll give you a nice bar. Then you'll draw a uniform befitting a master gunner. On board. Next man. Name? Bartholomew Blivens, sir. Bartholomew Blivens. Make your mark. No mask for a treacherous heart like an honest face. You keep an eye on him. Down below. Compliments for. Is it? Bowie. 
I thought you... Yes, you thought I was dead. I can hardly believe my eyes. You mean you don't want to believe me? A come come, Mr. Povey, is that kind or is that fair? As fair as what you did that day you abandoned me on a Bahama reef. If you please, Mr. Povey, it is not the time to talk about that. Oh, it's the time, all right. Unless you want me to go ashore and tell what I know. In which case, your present voyage is over before it's begun. No, 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 Povey. Mr. Boyle, would you take over, please? Mr. Lorenzo, take the deck watch. Come to my cabin. Leads when I think of one of your delicate constitution having to fend for yourself on a coral reef, Mr. Pope. Come off it, Captain. I know why you marooned me. It was so there'd be only three of you to share instead of four. It's true. A hostile wind did blow us away from oh. your reef. Between friends, we might have sailed back again, but we did exactly what you would have done, Mr. Povey. So no more of your sentimental nonsense, please. Now that we are four again, what then? We're not four. We're two. Boyle and Lorenzo, dull clods. Twenty thousand pounds apiece in their hands would only be spent in sinful ways. And you propose to remove them from the path of temptation? How? A knife in the dark? I'm not a violent man, Mr. Povey. I detest violence. People have such an awkward habit of getting in my way. I am an ambitious man, Mr. Povey. And an ambitious man, if he be bold enough, can carve himself a kingdom. I'm going to be a lord, my friend. And that, for a commoner like myself, takes a deal of money. And that's why there could be two less to share before we raise old England again. You cold-gutted shark. Oh, a flatterer. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're back again, Mr. Povey. You've no idea how gratifying it is to have a congenial soul. And fight it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's something I want to tell you. I have left with a trusted friend in London a sealed letter containing an exact and complete account of certain previous happenings. Only to be opened in case, just in case, of course, you should happen to return to England without me. Of course, my dear fellow. Very sensible of you. Now I know you will have a Happy voyage. I shall too. I look up my quarters. Thank you. 
We are sailing for Madagascar waters. We'll pick up the search where we left off. Every officer on board has a servant. I'll request the captain to assign you to me, then we can be together. Yes, I've spent a good many years of my life at sea, my lady, but I doubt if any woman minds a dash of salt, even in a peer of the realm, like myself. Now, if my lady will join me in a minuet. My lady, sir, not me lady. Blast me, Shadwell. Does one gentleman creep up on another without a cough or a spit or something to warn him? I'm not a gentleman, sir. I'm a gentleman's gentleman. Pity about the hair. I suppose you've tried everything. Bear's grease. Prenatal influence, perhaps. Deny, sir, sir. Thank you, Shadwell. Pardon, sir. I'll show you at your place. Captain, what's all this mummery? You can forget your bilge water manners for the time, Mr. Boyle. You are now officers on a king's ship. So a man must starve while his manners fatten. I know, I know. And in a king's ship, it is customary for the officers to rise when the captain enters. That's better. Gentlemen, be seated. have we here? Of course, but don't press me. Mr. Mercy, tell us something about yourself. You already know what I was of consequence, sir. While under Avery, I was taken by King's ship and brought to London. There I was tried for a pirate and condemned. You were innocent, of course. No, sir, I was guilty. You speak above your station. How came you to go on the account? Call it uh, love of adventure, crossed in love, a scandal, perhaps a mixing of all three. And you've seen something of the world? Enough, sir, to dislike what I've seen and to know there's small hope for a better. Perhaps you'll prefer the next world, Mr. Mercy. You were close enough to it when you were in the condemned hold at Newgate. But I'm keeping you from your dinner. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, a toast to the king, and since proposing it is the privilege of the youngest present, the honor falls to Mr. Mercy. <laughs> Mr. Mercy, we're waiting. No, sir. Since I have little love for the king, I'll neither propose his health nor drink it. Nevertheless, you are on a kingship. Kingship of the devils. It's all the same to me, sir. I owe him nothing. You owe him your neck, Mr. Mercy. If it were not for his bounty, you'd be dancing daintily on air at whopping. I owe my reprieve to you, Captain. So to you, I'll drink him gladly, but not to William. You stand up and drink to his majesty's health as a king's officer should. Or by fire and flame, I'll have you shipped back to Newgate on the first vessel we speak. Just... 
the king. The king, God bless, bless you. God bless him. Curious. Do you suppose His Majesty put him on board to spy us out? We found him chained to a pillar at Newgate. It wouldn't be too hard for the king to plant him there. Yes, but why would he speak so openly against the king? Your wits are even duller than usual, Mr. Lorenzo. Have you never heard of the serpent that takes the color of its background the better to strike? Shadwell. Yes, sir. You have a knowledge of highborn people and those at the court, Shadwell. Have you ever seen Mr. Mercy before? Not before this voyage, sir. He's as high of spirit as a gentleman of quality. I like him. Uh, would you find out who he is, where he comes from? As you wish, sir. Thank you, Shadwell. Oh. Good evening, Shadow. Excuse me, sir, but you seafaring men always seem to be looking at something that I never can see. We are looking for something just over the horizon. You know, sir, I recognized you for a gentleman the moment I saw you, sir. What are you, a valet, doing at sea? The captain employed me to make him socially acceptable, sir. I'm afraid we are too far out for me to swim back. But if I can be of service to you, sir. Did the captain send you here? Yes, sir. Why? He wants to know who or what you are, sir. Who do they think I am? Possibly a spy placed on board by His Majesty. They seemed uneasy, sir. Hmm. This, uh, this Captain Kidd, how long have you known him? Have you sailed with him before? Oh, no, sir. All I know is he's, uh, well, among other things, a merchant captain. A spy, that's strange. Why should they be afraid to be spied on? Good night, Chuck. Good night, sir. Who is he? Where's he from? He's a nobody, sir. He was employed by persons of quality where he learned his speech and his manners. Oh. shot will go over his yard. But if you wait for the down roll, the enemy's coming up. Now watch. Get ready. Ah! Hey! Hey! <laughs> Pretty shot, Mr. Mercy. Can you do as well with a 74 throwing grape and canister at you? I've done it, sir. Reload and secure, and pick up your practice on the larboard quarter swivel gun. Mr. Mercy, you've sailed with Avery. You must know these waters. Fairly, sir. If we needed to careen and take on stores, where would you recommend? Poverty Bay, sir. It lies. We just... draw too much water. You remember, Captain? Remember? We... Remember what? I only know the Spanish main. These are Madagascar waters. <laughs> uh, Poverty Bay. Aye, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mercy. Come along, Mr. Boyle. You blundering ass. 
your presence is becoming increasingly irksome to me. Get you below. Let's get down to the business of this voyage. Ooh. Hand me that chart, Mr. Boyle. Capitan, I have been thinking every day and every night. What about that dinero that we buried in the cave? What good is it there? Let's get it and get it back where we can spend it. That stays where it is for a while. Why? We've got a fatter prize sailing right into our pockets. Now... Here's our present position. Here's Madagascar. Here's Calicut. In June, the great galleon, the Queda Merchant, sails from Calicut to England. We should meet her about here. She's stuffed from keel to gunnels with treasure to the value of half a million pounds. Uh -huh. And we are to give her safe passage through the pirate seas. By uh, safe passage, you mean where to take her, Captain? Now, 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 don't be greedy, Mr. Povey. I grant that most of what's in her may find its way into our pockets, but let's be fair. The king, poor gentleman, will expect something. But however we do it, it must be done legal-like and honest. Stick to ways you're familiar with. Why, you pox-rattled villain, I can be as honest as any man if I have the incentive. Oh, yes, my lord Blaine. Lord Blaine's name is not to be mentioned among us, Mr. Povey. He's dead, so's his crew, and so's ours. And there's none outside this cabin that knows what became of them. And if you all enjoy living, you will remember that. Well, here's to our meeting with the Quida Merchant. Quida Merchant. Quida Merchant. Merchant. God bless her. God bless her. <laughs> Yours not in <indeed. laughs> Fresh from west, no west, sir. Course, no east by east. Night dark, but clear. Very well, Mr. Mercy. No east by east. No east by east, sir. the man that's responsible for this, I'll hang him. Fish the yard and reset it. What do you suppose happened? Someone's been tampering with these lines.
We are gathered together to bid farewell to a gallant seaman and a stout comrade. Here was a man, shipmate, whose heart the flinty mountains could not match, who always took better than he gave, whose benevolence was such the orphan's might and the rich man's gold alike found refuge in his pocket. A jealous providence removed him from our midst, and I esteem it a privilege to commit his body to the deep. We shall all mourn him. Aye, we shall mourn him, but take comfort, my friends. We shall never see his like again. Rest in peace. Pop him over. Pity, Mr. Mercy, a great pity, but the ship's work must go on. Move your gear into poor Mr. Boyle's cabin. You will take his place as master. As master. Aye, sir. See My inward so. revolt is not from the movement of the vessel, sir. It's occasioned by the company I endure. The manners I say nothing of, sir. But I'm a Dorsetshire man. And when I find a common shipmaster has the presumption to copy himself the coat of arms of one of our best Dorsetshire families, can you wonder if I'm physically upset? Well, whose crest was he copying? Credited or not, sir, the Blaine crest. Are you certain? Perfectly, sir. Pardon me, sir. I must join the captain. He's inspecting cast pickled eels. With Mr. Lorenzo. Mr. Mercy. Do your new duties include robbing my desk? Shoot me, Captain, and your head goes with it. I'm here by the King's orders. So he did plant you on board. You think he'd let a man sail with a crew and you get cutthroats and not keep tabs on him? And with good reason. If anything ever wreaked the piracy, this does. And murder, Captain. Boyle's death was no accident. By the way, uh... What ship was sunk here? The Twelve Apostles? Why the Twelve Apostles, Mr. Mercy? There's Blaine's ring. His name's on it. And he commanded the Twelve Apostles. That'll make interesting telling in London when we get back, Captain. If you get back. When I get back, for if I don't. On the other hand... On the other hand, what? Since a man doesn't exactly grow rich in the King's pay... Oh, huh. a crooked rogue. So you have your price. How much? 
An equal share in what's buried here. Share that with you, I'll be hanged if I do. You'll be hanged if you don't. Of all the slummocky blackguards. And if you do share Mr. King's informer, what guarantee is there that you won't still turn evidence for the Crown? If I go in with you, I'm equally guilty. And if we're caught, we hang together. But I can keep you from being caught. What more could you ask? <laughs> you know, Mr. Mercy, I've wondered sometimes if ever I'd meet a more unscrupulous blackguard than myself. And I have. Well, let's be sensible about this. Who knows? We might be useful to each other one day. In one way or another? You've forgotten something. For a ring. So I have. Listen in carefully, because I want you to tell it in London if anything happens to me. Kid caught me in his cabin robbing his desk. I lied to him, told him I was a king's informer. Good. Yes, but he didn't believe me, not one word. He just pretended to. Oh, why didn't you shoot him? Then he will give us no more trouble. He proves the liar I think him. King's men or no, he betrayed an uncommon interest in the Twelve Apostles. I didn't like him, Mr. Lorenzo, and I mean to find out why. Why, you could have charged him with robbery and turned him off at a yard arm, all legal and shipshape. We would have been rid of him once and for all. Let's not be impetuous, Mr. Povey. He can't believe us, unless he swims. It'll be rather amusing to find out what he does. So you rest easy. Leave Mr. Mercy to me. Pipe the corner. Pipe the corner! The Queen of Merchant, sure enough. Can you make her out, Captain Rawson? Mm. She hasn't the cut of a buccaneer, Your Excellency. Much too tidy for that, more like a kingship. Yet she has the lines of a merchantman. Have the longboat ready and man. Longboat, same boat! Stand by to put a shot across our bows, Mr. Mercy. Aye, sir. Number four gun crew, stand by for action! She's flying the English colors. Perhaps she's our escort ship. It was about here we were to meet, wasn't it? Well, we'll make dead certain just the same. Mr. Hilliard, see that all hands are at the station. Very good, sir. Ready? Fire! Well placed, Mr. Mercy. Out of Tarbert. Out of Tarbert. Starboard, she is, sir. You will come across with us in the long boat, Mr. Mercy. Convey my compliments to all officers who will dress as befitting a king's ship. Aye, sir.
kid of His Majesty's uh, privateer adventure at your service, sir. Mr. Povey, uh, my surgeon. Mr. Mercy, my master. Mr. Lorenzo, my navigator. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. I'm Captain Rossi. I'm Lord Paulsworth. Majesty's ambassador to the court of the Grand Mughal. Your obedient servant, sir. I've been sent to give you convoy, and we'd better make haste with our business. These are unhealthy waters for ships to be hove to, as I discovered a day or so ago. You mean you sighted some of the Pirate Brotherhood? More than that, sir. We beat off to them. Avery and Culliford out of last hope. Some 30 leagues south of here. Oh, stop me, I near forgot. Could you spare us some powder and ball? We use more than was safe during the action. Oh, why, all that you need, sir, and welcome. Mr. Lorenzo here could attend to that, then? Oh, Mr. Hilliard, take Mr. Lorenzo below and see that he gets what he wants. Aye, aye, sir. Captain. Oh, to the master gunner. He'll take care of all your needs. My daughter, Lady Anne Dunstan, Captain Kidd, Mr. Povey, Mr. Mercy. Haven't we met before? I think not, my lady. You remind me of someone I've seen. I think it impossible that we could have ever met. How do we proceed now, Captain? Well, I'm instructed to give you protection past Madagascar. And you'll be safe as long as we sail in company. But Avery will be a wolf at your heels. And if we are separated in darkness or storm... And uh, what would you advise then, sir? Well, I suppose we could take Lord Falsworth and Lady Anne uh, aboard the adventure to Madagascar's astern. And then if we are separated and this vessel should be taken. What about the treasure on board? One silver chest alone. A present to His Majesty from the Grand Mogul. Contains precious gems valued at more than a million pounds. May I suggest, Your Excellency? Now, why not transfer the treasure chest with yourself and Lady Anne on board the adventure until we are out of danger? She's a kingship. That is a great responsibility. And although my instructions are that you are to trust me in all matters, I don't know if I could go so far as to... What else can we do? Three of them against us, sir. Well, even two, sir. We'd be helpless. It's the wisest course. I defer to your excellency. And now could we inspect the chests? We could have them slung into our boats along with the gear of Lord Falsworth and Lady Anne. Why, oh, certainly. Come, this way, Captain. No trouble at all. Hoist away. Mr. Povey. I've sent for the manifest, Captain. You may check it against the contents of this chest and give me your receipt, if you will. Gladly, gladly. Oh, uh, there you are, Mr. Lorenzo. Have you uh, completed your business? Almost, sir. Your people have been most kind, Capitan Rosal. There is only one detail left. It will not take a minute. Finished up, then. We must be gone within the hour. Yes, Capitan. Oh, manifest, sir. Would you attend to that, Mr. Perry? Thank, Thank you very much, Captain.
Renzo. You've seen a lovely lady before this. A tribute to your beauty, ma'am. Uh, did you finish your business below? Yes, Captain Duncan. Then we'd better be underway. Uh, Mr. Mercy, you will see Lord Parsworth and the Lady Anne into the boat. Yes, sir. I apologize, my lady, for our poor accommodations, but my valet, Shadwell, will see that you're made comfortable. It's a pleasure to have your ladyship aboard. If you'll follow me, please. Why hasn't it happened? I say how sorry I am. The captain has requested that you take your meals in the main cabin. Oh, no, Shadwell. I can't bear to face those men. I can't. I quite understand, my lady. But the captain's orders are orders. Shadwell, you must help me. There's no one else I can trust. But what can I do, my lady? I'm only a servant. Oh, where can I turn? I, I'm so confused and frightened. I... He and my father and the others lost back there. And on the ship, wherever I go, those horrible, staring men. That Lorenzo, who was always standing behind me, beside me. Last night, there was a tapping on the door. When I opened it, there he was, that, that evil, smiling face of his. Well, he might better belong with those pirates you fought a few days ago. Pirates, Malin? We fought no pirates. Well, my father said Captain Kidd told me. Shadwell, what manner of ship is this? My father was killed deliberately, I'm sure of it. That's why I can't bear to face your captain. I'd accuse him of... There is a man on board, my lady, a gentleman, whom I know you can trust. Mr. Mercy? Yes, my lady. Shadwell, I know I've met or seen him before, no matter how he denies it. His name is Mercy, but who is he? All I really know is, my lady, he's no friend of the captain's. Perhaps if I ask him, he'll... Shall I? Oh, yes, will you please? Yes, my lady. I am asking you again, very nice, 
My dear Capitan. Your fancy manners do not impress me, Mr. Lorenzo. When do we divide the gold? In London, not before. Uh-huh. Then look, Capitan, I will make a bargain with you. A bargain? Everybody wants to bargain with me, you and Mercy. Father and thunder, what do you think I am, a stinking sausage merchant? What kind of a bargain? The girl. All my life I have dreamed of a beautiful woman like that. Give me half of my dinero now, and you can split the rest between you. If you will let me have her. Fie on him. He's smit with love. Again. I want her. And I am going to take her. Whether I like it or not. Uh-huh. With all this treasure on board, the crew is like a barrel of hot gunpowder. All that is needed is a word in the right ears. Do you mean me of me? You're a witness. He's inciting the crew to mutiny. <laughs> No, 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 Capitan. I was only joking. You have a very nasty way of joking, Mr. Lorenzo. As for the girl, I have my own plans for her, and they do not include you. Get out. Mercy, My right. name's Adam Blaine. Son of Lord Blaine. I knew it. I knew it. Well, what are you doing on this ship? My father was killed and accused of piracy. A few people believed Lord Blaine. The king did. That's why I went to sea and turned pirate three years ago. That's why I'm on this ship. I knew that someday I'd come upon the truth. That you have. It was Captain Kidd who killed your father, wasn't it? I'm no fool. He did the same thing to my father. The fat butcher. Taking me three years to track him down. Three years of degradation. Now I've got him where I want him and he knows it. You mean he knows who you are? He knows something. That's why you didn't admit to me who you were. Why you avoided me. If Kit knows we shared this, he'd kill you with as little compunction as he means to kill me. If I let him. I do to help them. There must be something. Forget everything you've seen on the ship. Play up to him. Be friendly. That way you'll be safe. Now, when you get back to London, no matter what has happened to me, go to the Lords of the Admiralty and the King. You'll be doing me a great service as well as yourself. I will, Adam. I promise. You're going to have trouble with Lorenzo. The beating of the lamb is exciting the tiger. His blood's getting too rich for him. He'd be the better for bleeding. Things are getting a bit complicated, my lord. The king may accept the elimination of the Queen of Merchant as an accident. Maybe even the sudden demise of Lord Fallsworth. But what about the lady? You said you had plans for her. Do they include... Mr. Povey, the little dear's as safe with me as if she was my daughter. My passion's power and gold. Since she suspects nothing, I'll deliver her to His Majesty on with his share of the Queen of Merchants' goods, or weep appropriately over the untimely demise of her pa, receive the grateful thanks of Miss Sovereign, and a peerage is mine. My lord. Laugh if you will, but that's what I'll have. And neither man nor devil shall stop me.
Shadrach? Senorita, milady. Do not be alarmed. Now that she knows who I am, the kind of a ship she's on, I think we can count on to keep ahead. You stay here till I come on watch. Mercy, you did well to protect her. Yes, I'm all right. Look after Lady Anne. Adam, what's the matter? My medallion, it's gone. Has the Blaine crest on it. Blaine. Perhaps I can find it, please. No. It must have come off just before Lorenzo went through the port. Chad will take Lady Anne to her cabin. Oh, please, Adam, I can't go in there. You must, Anne. This is serious. It involves you. Remember, no matter what tricks he tries, you've never seen me before, and you don't know who I am. Shadwell, I think. Well, don't worry about me, sir. He never could get anything out of me, and he never will. It's the only way you'll be safe. Shadwell will watch out for you. What about you, Adam? What will he do? The same thing he's done to the others, if he gets a chance. Oh, Adam. Don't worry, Anne. I at least know what to expect. Go then. Shadwell. If anything does happen, remember you to stand by Lady Anne and see that she gets safely to London. I'll stake my life on it, sir. I know you will. Be careful, Adam. Please be careful. Come, my lady. No king's man. Who is he then? Tomorrow we put into the lagoon for water, and while the crew's getting it on board, you and me and Mr. Mercy's going to the cave. You going to take him in there? I've a peculiar humor to watch my clever young friends fizz when we dig up their chest. Sweet dreams.
Dig fast, Mr. Mercy. You haven't got forever. Who might this be? Perhaps a man that asked too many questions. Gently now, Mr. Mercy. You've come on something. So it was the Twelve Apostles, eh, Captain? Yes, it was, Mr. Mercy. Open it up. Brave seaman, but foolish. Did you happen to know him, Mr. Mercy? I've heard of him. I thought perhaps you had. This is yours. Is this? I uh, traded a ring for it. One of Avery's men. Yes. When I encountered Lord Blaine at sea, I did my simple duty as a loyal subject. A pity he turned pirate and traitor to his king. Liar! Now, Mr. Povey, tide closes this place in half an hour. We've nothing more to fear. Oh, yes, you have, Captain. Lady Anne. It's a long voyage home, Mr. Povey, and anything might happen. Naturally, her ladyship is still very distressed. In the midst of life, we are in death, Shadwell. And though my heart, my leads, heart, sir. My heart bleeds. Confound you, Shadwell. You drove the thought right out of me head. And it was an uncommon pretty one. I'm sure of that, sir. Go to her at once. Tell her she can't mourn forever, and I shall expect her to take her meals in the main cabin with the rest of us. Very well, sir. Poor lad. We turn just in time to see him go over the edge. Search for an hour. Never came up. Well, here's to him. Whenever he is. You feeling ill? Yes, sir. I'll go to my cabin with your permission. If you wish, it's been quite a trying voyage. What was one little thing and another would bear up. You'll soon be home again. I warned Adam not to go. No one could have stopped him. It was cold-blooded, planned, deliberate. The same will happen to her ladyship unless we can... I've been hanging on the rudder chain since dark, waiting for the turn of the watch. The jolly boat's moored astern. I waked it alongside. It's secured right under this port. 
Bart, get in it and drift aft under the main cabin. Well, now, get me some dry clothes. Shadow, where is the captain? In his own cabin with Mr. Povey, sir. Examining the silver chest they brought back on board, sir. My father's chest. Shadwell kid doesn't suspect you. Tell Lady Anne to get some things together, and when the coast is clear, you come back for me. Yes, sir. evidence for us in London. Watson on the small boat moored astern. We are all ashore. Then where, Adam? The two days' journey overland is the pirate town of Last Hope. It's the most lawless place on earth, but I have friends there. But somehow they'll find us a ship for England. England? No. Come on. Hello, Adam. Hello, Mr. Gordon.
William Kidd. Greetings, Captain. What news have you brought me from the Indian seas? By your leave, Your Majesty, both good and ill, but mostly very good indeed. I returned by way of the American colonies, sire. So I understood. With the main points of your voyage, I am familiar. I wonder if you can enlighten me about the affair of the Queen's godchild, Lady Anne Dunstan, and your shipmaster, Mr. Mercy. Oh, that poor impetuous fellow, sire. Inveigled that bud of innocence he did into running away with it. And catching him red-handed in defense of my very life. I was forced to dispatch them both. Rest in peace. Tell me, Captain, about the treasure and the Quida merchant. Unfortunate, sire. Most unfortunate. We'd ship but that chest when up she blew. And all souls went heavenward. Rest in peace to them, ditto. I see. And about the twelve apostles and Lord Blaine, do you encounter any trace? Nay, sire. I can only hope that the weight of his sins sank both him and his ship. I see. Then how do you explain this? Whose might that be, Your Majesty? My officers found it on your ship at Plymouth after you left for London. It bears the Blaine crest, with which I believe you are not unfamiliar. I've always felt that Mr. Povey, Miss Surgeon, a very wily fellow indeed, was hiding something from me. Hiding it in a secret lazarette in your cabin, Captain? I hope Mr. Povey has a proper explanation, sire. Mr. Povey was killed three days ago defending it. With his dying oath, he swore it was not his. Perhaps Shadwell, my valet, slipped it aboard. Might it not have come from a Madagascar cave, Captain? There's something dreadful queer about all this, Your Majesty. Enough of your lies! Look! Overlooked last hope, Captain. We stood on the headland with my friend Avery and watched you sail by. May it please your majesty, I accuse this man of piracy and murder. Was ever a gentleman so misfortunate? Lock him up in Newgate. He is to be held for the next session of a court of OEA in Terminal. There to be tried for his life. Hands off me, you scoundrel! All I done was to the credit! And for the honor and glory of England! So here's my bequest to them what hunts what I have hid, and to their sons' sons down through the endless corridors of time. Greed that spawns murder, hatred that corrodes the soul. Ambition, the foulest trumpet of all. Hey, Jack, Jack Kent, sell me a bit of that rope for sixpence, will you? Save your money, my lad. You can have it all for nothing if you only step up here and wear it. Hurry <laughs> up, Jack. Can't wait forever. Captain Kidd is dead, my Lord Blaine. His account is closed. Now, in what manner can I atone for the injustice I worked upon your father? Orford, your first sea lord. What do you suggest? We've a fine frigate of 50 guns, commissioned for American waters, sire, that we thought of naming the Lady Anne. It should be a wedding gift to you from the Crown. Your loyalty and service to King and Country.
I'd rather eat the bill scum from an African slaver. Adam, don't let that temper get you the lash again. If I must hang, I'll hang. But I'll go to the gallows with clean guts, at least. Hey, you! What kind of stinking maggots meat is this? Waters! Waters! There's that dainty crumb mercy complaining about the taste of the king's bounty again. Watch it. Bounty? Bounty me eye. The king's allowance is threepence a day for food, not muck from the sewers of Whitechapel. Making trouble again, eh, Mercy? I'm asking only what a man's legally entitled to. Here, smell this. Delicious. Here, your governor. What sort of a kingdom is this? Where a man's condemned before he's heard and starved before they hang him. Who's that quarrelsome fella? Out of mercy. He was taken in a pirate ship by His Majesty's frigate Wasp. He's always escaping, so that's why we keep him in chains. He's got a lacing of tiger's blood in him. Phew. This ain't exactly a flower garden, is it? Oh, forgive me, Governor. These are two of my officers. Uh, Mr. Boyle, Governor Landers. Mr. Lorenzo, Governor Landers. Spanish blood. A pretty lot of sinners. Capitan, do you think that is anyone down there knows us? I hope not. Governor, would you be good enough to tell them what we're here for? Give heed, you, you vermin. Here's news to your advantage. Is the hangman dead, then? Out with it, then, shot nasty face. Is it that your mother's turned into an honest woman? Silence, you mutinous dogs. If another man speaks, I'll trice him up by the thumbs and play him raw. Governor, is that the way to win the love of these unfortunate gentlemen? Now then, me bullies, would you rather do the gallows dance and hang in chains till the crows pick your eyes from your rotting skulls? Or would you feel the roll of a stout ship beneath your feet again? I'm a vessel, the Adventure Galley, and the King's commissioned a sailor. And for those who show a loyal and a stout heart, there's a royal pardon in the offing. Which of you knows the waters of Madagascar? I do. Would you have him unlocked, Governor? Order. Unlock him. Look you then. I want men with iron in their blood and steel in their sinews. And the first up here is the first enlisted. Governor, if your waters are ready, would you be good enough to have them lower the ropes? Lower away! Your Majesty, having forfeited me honor in that I was forced to strike me colors to a pirate, I want no reward but to regain it in the service of Your Majesty. Unless it be, or is it true that Lord Blaine's lands are estreated and his title forfeit? Yes. All, all I ask is that if I lay this renegade nobleman by the heels, is that you honor the humble self with his castle and his lands. Is that all you want, Captain Kidd? Not a pardon more, Your Majesty. Hmm. The fellow treats of a title so lightly, he must be bursting with noble blood. Though I confess he keeps it well hid. Aye, sir, you can no more judge of a man by his appearance than you can judge the extent of a nobleman's brains by the expensiveness of his wig. <laughs> <laughs> I might have supposed that the captain of the King's Guard would deign to fence with me. Come, Captain. Is your courage less than your wit? Nay, sir, I know nothing of the uh, fence. You must come at me quickly as though you'd kill me. Very well, then. I ask pardon, sire. I have a hot head when roused. I only meant to demonstrate. And for good purpose, Captain. Your Majesty is satisfied with the captain of our choosing? I can think of none better. I thank you, sir. 
And now, Captain, the main mission of your cruise will be to meet a great ship, the Quida Merchant, which is sailing from India with vast treasures, and to give her safe conduct in my name past the pirate waters of Madagascar. But, Your Majesty, will her commander accept my letter of mark as sufficient authority to... You shall have a letter to our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, who is returning in her. But he is to accept your protection. And to submit to all matters pertaining to the safety of the ship and her treasure, sir. Oh, yeah. And now, sire, me crew. Your crew? Captain Kidd wishes to recruit a crew from the pirates and now under capital sentence in Newgate and the Marshalsea. A crew of condemned pirates? Aye, sir. There's none would be so loyal, nor fight so desperate as cutthroats under sentence of death, if they knew that at the end of the voyage, a royal pardon would be in their pockets. That I shall hold you accountable for their good conduct. Between their conduct and mine, Your Majesty, there will be little to choose. And now, goodbye. And God speed you. I am but his unworthy sparrow. What are you waiting for? Well, Captain, that chest's been in your cabin a longish time. And we all thought as how it wouldn't do no harm to open up that chest and make sure that what was in it then is in it now. I suppose you remember what was in it? I, I remember an emerald necklace that came off that Portuguese ship, El Vengar. And all those pearls that we took from the big ship, the Virgin Queen. I remember a diamond medallion we got from that Moorish guy in off Madagascar. And could we ever forget that silver casket with the arms of Lord Blaine that you claimed for yourself after the taking of the Twelve Apostles, sir? Your neck will be stretched as long as your memory one of these days. Satisfied? Gallows? Meat? Put them back. Lower away. Else what do you want now? We've got but half an hour before the tide traps us. That's as may be, sir. But we're all equal in this, I take it. Equal shares, yes. Well, that key then, what you put back in your belt. That goes down with the chest. Thus we start all clear and no favors. And if some of us don't get back, it'll be that much easier open for them as does. Question me honor again, would you? I'll rip you from belly to chime. <laughs> such callous rascals that we'd leave a dead comrade without commending his soul to his new master. Here lieth one who through treachery and avarice would have placed in jeopardy the lives of honest men. And here may he lie forever in the sands of Madagascar. Rest in peace. It's time to be out, my lad. It's time to be away.
gentleman's a gentleman, he's a gentleman. That's all there is to it, sir. I'm one of nature's gentlemen, but I need polish, my good man. Madagascar, for centuries the bloodiest cockpit of all the seas, where the infamous Brotherhood of the Damned waited to plunder the treasure-laden galleons from India and Cathay, then returned drunk with slaughter to their pirate stronghold of last hope. Most ruthless of all was Captain William Kidd. He encountered the great London galleon, the Twelve Apostles, commanded by Admiral Lord Blaine, and approaching unsuspected in the guise of a peaceful merchant, by a sudden treacherous salvo, he reduced her to a burning hulk. When night fell, the Twelve Apostles was only a blazing funeral pyre on the placid surface of a Madagascar lagoon. Stop me. There's a pretty sight. It'll be prettier still when the fire reaches the magazine, Captain. Pretty, though. Lots of stout seamen among them. They've been with us a long time. We can none of us live forever, Mr. Boyle. Dead men don't talk. Man your own. We got this job to do before high tide. <laughs> If the tide catches us there, it'll save the king's hangman some rope. There you are. Deep enough to bury a man in. Give us a hand, man. Already, Captain. Down she goes. If I'm to improve myself... The gentleman employs the terminology, my good man, only when addressing lower servants or his inferior sir. You see, that's why I need you. My upbringing... The gentleman never sucks his teeth, sir. Many a man's social career has been ruined by lesser. You seem to know your business. I want the best mine and I can pay for it. hundred quid a year. An infallible mark of a person of quality is his reluctance to pay his domestics high wages. You don't say so. Merely an idiosyncrasy of good breeding, sir. Uh, Sixty quid a year, then? You realize I've never been on board a ship before, sir. Oh, don't let that frighten you. To the contrary. In fact, since I was a nipper, I've had rather an adventurous inclination toward life on the bound in Maine. It should be quite educational, sir. You'll learn a lot, no doubt. <laughs> Is it a bargain, then? Very well, sir. My hand on it. Oh.
<laughs> then, it is your proposal, my Lord Bellamont, that Captain Kidd sail to meet our ambassador, Lord Falsworth, and give him safe convoy through the pirate waters of Madagascar. May it please your majesty, yes. That needs a bold and adventurous man. Bring in this Captain Kidd while we take the measure of him. Captain William Kidd. Your Royal Majesty. An noble lord. Belmont, is this your roaring killer of Spanish buccaneers? <laughs> me, me lad. I am only a peaceful shipmaster who must do trade with other ships without inquiring too closely about their business. And it was so I fell into the hands of the Twelve Apostles, a king ship turned pirate. In Madagascar waters? I have never been in Madagascar waters, Your Grace. It was off the southern tip of Africa where I had gone to trade in elephant's teeth. Who commanded her? One of your admirals, Your Majesty. Name of Lord Blaine. He did turn pirate then. Sufficiently, my lads, to put fear in honest traders like myself. And if you are successful in this voyage, Captain, what reward do you expect? May it please.